Hello boys and girls, how are you getting on? Are you well? I hope your weekend was just perfect and I hope that you're not getting Monday blues tomorrow morning when you have to go back to work and uh, for those of you who don't really know what Monday blues is it's an expression used to describe when someone is feeling down on a Monday morning typically when you have to go back to work because Mondays are uh, generally viewed as the worst days of the week because after two days off when we all do all sorts of exciting activities and we get engaged in uh, all sorts of uh, outdoor activities and attend parties and have quality time off with our families and children and our partners and whatnot on a Monday morning the cold reality hits home and we have to go back to work and 99% of people I know get really depressed on a Monday morning and it affects me too to a certain degree but you see the trick is not to allow yourself to be brought really down you know down uh, down to the very pits you know depression because uh, you, you're running the risk of uh, damaging your whole week you know the, like the mood that you're gonna get on a Monday morning sets the mood for the entire week and if, if you're depressed on a Monday there's a good chance that that uh, mood will carry through your whole week and you'll be snappy at your work colleagues when they ask you to do things and do favors and approach you with all different sorts of requests you'll be cranky and you might have an argument or two so why not just cheer up just accept the reality and the reality is we all have a work to do because 99 percent of people will go to work and in this day and age probably some of you might be unemployed you might be sitting at home and uh, being an active job seeker or just living on social welfare which happens sometimes you know but uh, by and large I, I believe that we're all going back to work tomorrow morning but it's not really today's topic anyhow today's topic is that you have to handle all different uh, electrical appliances with care due to the risks involved and the risks are burning oneself you know and that's exactly what happened to me today you see I burned my my fingers my index finger and my thumb and what happened is I walked into the bathroom and then my my wife was there and we started having a conversation and I didn't realize that she plugged in the hair curler you know the thing that women use to curl their hair you know she had plugged it in and it was sitting there on the bathtub edge and I just somehow during the conversation without thinking anything you know I just randomly grabbed it and little did I know that it was actually <laughs> hot it was heated up and I just threw it down immediately and with a loud shriek I, I started uh, pouring some cold water onto my fingers to lessen the damage you know because that's what they say what you have to do when you suffer burns you have to cool down the surface of the skin as soon as possible so that the so that the heat doesn't penetrate the deeper layers of the skin and doesn't do more damage you know but thankfully I'm, I'm feeling okay I applied some ointment to the wounds you know there, there were no visible wounds but probably tomorrow I'll get some blisters or something you know but anyway I'm feeling fine there's no need to worry about me too much I survived this ordeal you know but this is just to tell you guys that you have to be extra careful with all domestic electrical appliances you know because uh, say for instance due to the risks involved you know which is today's automatic expression basically repeat it memorize it due to the risks involved due to the risks involved and basically you can use this phrase whenever you mention something that is risky you know potentially hazardous potentially dangerous things like uh, base jumping as far as I'm aware about 10 to 20 percent of all base jumpers will die in related accidents throughout their careers you know so that makes that kind of sport very extremely dangerous and anybody who takes up base jumping which is a subsection of parachute jumping you know but base jumping is when people jump off very 
low heights, you know, and traditionally they jump off buildings and statues and they jump into caves, those massive caves like canyons and into ravines, they jump off cliffs, you know, but the, the heights are very, very relatively low to what uh, traditional parachute jumper would experience jumping off a plane, you know. So uh, there's a risk that uh, the parachute might not open or you wouldn't have enough time to open it and you basically have to have a very good reaction time because you might not open it on time. And then if it doesn't, if the parachute basically doesn't deploy, you'll just fall to your death, you'll be smashed against the ground, right? So due to the risks involved, the risky sports such as base jumping and uh, what other kind of sport might I mention here? Uh, probably, I can't really think of anything. You know, my brain is not really functioning at 100% of its capacity. So forgive me, forgive me for mentioning only one sport. But anyway, you have to be considering those sports very carefully due to the risks involved. And this is a typical way how you use that phrase, you know. And going back to domestic accidents and uh, accidents involving electrical appliances, I can think of another potential potential accident that awaits there to happen to anyone who's not careful enough, you know. Iron, our typical iron, you know, we use to iron clothes. Sometimes we leave it plugged in, you know, and then we might walk away. But what about someone who might approach it? Maybe there are children in the house, maybe your partner is sitting in the living room watching TV, and then you would walk away, leaving the iron hot. And they might come to the kitchen or they might come upstairs looking for you, whatever. And you were doing the ironing, you were doing the ironing, and you were you walked away, obviously, and the iron is left there. They might touch the iron, you know. Similarly, to the way I touched the hair curler, you know, unaware that it was actually plugged in, because it was placed in a location where I didn't kind of, I didn't think that a hot hair curler could be placed in a on a bathtub edge, you know. I thought that she would be holding it in her, in her hand if it was hot, you know. So people might assume similar things. Uh, about the iron, they might think that once it's placed there in a normal location that it's not hot because it's always sitting there, you know, but it could be there and it could be hot just because you just walked away with an intention of returning back and finishing up your ironing job, you know, but you just had to attend something else, you know, so all these things have to be, be, be treated with the utmost uh, carefulness and you have to go about the whole thing very very attentively and uh, you have to treat it very carefully you know due to the risks involved so basically you can use this phrase due to the risks involved whenever you're discussing some risky risky sports or risky potentially risky activity at, at home, in your household, or outdoor exercise, or just about anything else, at work, you know. Say, for instance, you are, your job involves highly technical skills, and then you're talking to someone, and you tell them, listen, you might think that my job is simple enough, but still, it's very specific, and I'm handling hazardous materials on a daily basis, and unless you get the proper training and spend quite some time getting used to that that job and uh, you you get trained into how to do all those routine things properly unless you do that you are actually you would be running a high risk of getting yourself injured and that job is not to be taken lightly due to the risks involved because there are certain risks involved uh, when you are engaged in those particular activities, whether it's handling some chemicals in a chemical plant or operating a saw in a sawmill, you know, I've heard about all sorts of accidents, people sawing off their fingers or even hands and 
basically disfiguring himself, you know, so all these jobs are to be treated with the utmost care due to the risks involved. But they will brief you on that upon starting your job, you know, they will fill you in on that and they will normally provide you with proper training, so there's no need to worry. You get proper training and you go about those activities with the proper care, then nothing should happen to you. And you will get away easily, just like me with a couple bandaged fingers, maybe. God forbid something happens to us, something that is actually worse than a couple of burnt fingers, you know, but accidents tend to happen and it's just uh, other statistics, you know, those things are inevitable on a larger scale, you know, if you look at the whole world and its population, then accidents are just bound to happen. Unfortunately, you know, but it's just life. What can I say? Anyhow, I got a bit carried away with my monologue again, my friends, but that's that's what I am, you know. You have to take me for what I am, for who I am, you know. I'm Robbie, I'm your friend, and I'm your fluency mentor, obviously, but sometimes I just enjoy having a monologue, a conversation of this type with you guys, so that you can just sit back and watch me and uh, learn some new phrases and collocations for your own English conversations. Okay guys, have a nice week and stay tuned. Bye-bye.